welcome back. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to challenge you here and see if you can figure out how to create a power series for this function. And, um, and actually, we, we are only going to be constructing the power series to the fourth degree polynomial. We'll stop there. Centering it at x equals 0. So if you really understood what I did in the first example, then this should be, um, I mean, it's really the same thing. It's just a matter of finding the derivatives and putting them in the right spot. So let me reiterate something, OK? In the first couple packets, what hopefully you started to see is that you're generating infinite series. You're generating power series for, uh, for functions that you are familiar with, pretty much. And uh, there's different ways to generate power series or infinite series or polynomial approximations. They're all really the same thing uh, depending on how you look at it. But uh, kind of like the common thread that, that links all of the different concepts together in this unit is we're trying to, we're trying to figure out if, a, if an infinite series converges and if the infinite series does converge, what does it converge to? So sometimes a, an infinite series might converge at only one point. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what does it mean to converge? I think I remember when I was first learning this, um, these concepts, like, what does that mean? Well, it just means that when is the infinite series the same as the function that the infinite series is being used to either approximate or to give the exact value. So converging, when an infinite series converges, it means that the infinite series for whatever values of x is exactly the same as the function for, the, for those same values of x that the series converges to. So uh, we'll continue to talk more about that. But uh, my challenge, again, to you is to figure out what this fourth degree polynomial is. And let me, uh, let me also reiterate this, that f of x... Taylor's theorem, which you'll see coming up soon, f of x is equal to f of 0. Now again, this, is, this f of x is being centered, this infinite series is being centered at x equals 0. Uh, f of 0 plus f prime at 0 multiplied by x plus f double prime at 0 multiplied by x squared over 2 factorial plus f triple prime at 0. Uh, multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial plus, and uh, you know, I'm going to take it all the way out to the fourth uh, derivative at 0, multiplied by x to the fourth over 4 factorial, and plus dot dot dot. So that's the infinite series, and the fourth degree polynomial would just be this stuff right here. This right here is our fourth degree polynomial of x. So keep in mind, that's really what we're doing. And I like to use p of 0 and p prime at 0 and, and that notation when I'm using the um, polynomial approximation. So you could use either one. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what we're going to do first is along the left-hand side over here, we're just going to, and this is really pretty tedious, actually. Uh, it's part that I don't really like, that it's so tedious. And you know, normally, you're not going to have to do all of this, but it's super helpful. You really do need to know how to generate these coefficients of each of these terms. And so what I mean by that is uh, the coefficients are these guys right here. These are the, uh, the coefficients are the, the constants. They're just real numbers that are in front of the, uh, well, this real number here is just a constant. And then the real number that's in front of the x, the coefficient of the linear term. Here we have f double prime at 0, which is the coefficient of the quadratic term, and so forth. Okay, so there's a lot of patterns here, which is also one of the reasons why I really like this chapter. Love the patterns. So keep in mind, you, we, need to, we need to find the derivatives here and then plug in 0 to each of those derivatives. Well, if we're going to find derivatives, we first have to start with what the function is. So the function f of x is equal to ln of 1 plus x. Well, we already knew that. Okay, So we're going to list these over here, and then in the space provided here, then we're just going to find the derivatives at 0. Well, uh, let's try to do this pretty quickly here. You can pause and, and uh, try to find these derivatives on your own if you want. Um, 
the derivative of ln, which is, again, another reason why I love this chapter, because we get a lot of practice with things that we haven't seen for a while. The derivative of ln of anything is 1 over that anything multiplied by the derivative of that anything, and the derivative of 1 plus x is 1. I'm going to rewrite this in such a way it makes it easier for me to find the derivative. Okay, 1 plus x to the negative 1. All right, I, I know I need to come come up with all these derivatives. So before I plug in 0 and find f of 0 and f prime of 0, I'm going to find the derivatives first. Okay. So then f double prime of x is equal to, again, here we have something to a power. So we're going to multiply that something by the negative 1. Bring the power up front. Multiply by what's inside to the negative 2. Okay. And then uh, the multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is 1. So and again, I like to rewrite these in such a way that it makes it easier for me to plug in the, uh, the zero. So this format here, negative 1 over 1 plus x quantity squared, makes it easier for me to plug in zero. Over here, when I write it as negative 1 times this guy here to negative 2, that makes it easier for me to take the derivative. So I'm going to show you both ways. Okay, f triple prime of x is equal to, again, negative 2 times negative 1 is 2 multiplied by 1 plus x to the negative 3, and I'm going to rewrite that as 2 over 1 plus x to the third. Okay, and then finally our fourth derivative at x is equal to negative 6 times 1 plus x to the negative 4, multiplied by the derivative of what's inside. Again, that's 1. So um, let's rewrite this right here. Negative 6 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. Okay, I want to leave some room right there on that line for the polynomial. Okay, so now we want to find our f of 0, and let's do this. Let's cheat a little bit, go down here. f of 0 is equal to, so right here we're coming up with the coefficients, right? So we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 coefficients. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, functions over here to the left. So f of 0 is ln of 1 plus 0, which is ln of 1. Again, that's a reminder. Uh, and that's 0. That's OK. f prime at 0. Again, 1 over 1 plus 0, which is 1. OK. f double prime at 0. Well, f double prime at 0 is negative 1 over 1. So that's negative 1. f triple prime at 0. Just got to be careful here. f triple prime at 0 is 2 over 1 plus 0 cubed. So 2 over 1 cubed, which is 2. And f fourth derivative, I should say, fourth derivative of f at 0 would be negative 6, right? Negative 6 over 1 plus 0 to the fourth, so negative 6. So I have all of the coefficients I need. And if you like them underlined, there you go. And now I just have to plug these coefficients into this equation right up here, and we're good to go. If you don't want to simplify it right now, it's totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, put f of 0 and f of 0 is 0. So I'm going to, on the line here, I'll write it unsimplified, and then right underneath it, I'll simplify it. So again, I, if you haven't paused the video yet, I would urge you to do just that. Pause the video and see if you can kind of make sense of these where these numbers go. And the more you do that, the better off you're going to be. So 0 plus 1 times x plus the second derivative at 0, which is negative 1, times x squared over 2 factorial, and then plus the third derivative at 0. I just have to look back up at my equation, which is 2, multiplied by x cubed over 3 factorial, and then um, minus 6x to the fourth over 4 factorial. It's kind of a mess. and uh, just a quick heads up, sometimes you have to come up with the nth term. You know, I think you probably already have done that. In, in the case where we're trying to find a polynomial, you're never going to have to come up with the nth term. Polynomial means you're going to stop at a, at a finite number of terms. And we have stopped here at the fourth degree. Okay, once we get to a fourth power, we know we have a fourth degree polynomial. Okay, so simplified, and you can check my math on this, make sure I'm right x um, minus x squared over 2. And then uh, 3 factorial is, again, 3 times 2 times 1. So the 2's are going to cancel. And we're going to get plus x to the third over 3. And then um, right over here, 4 factorial is 
factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and the 3 times the 2 cancels with the 6. So we have minus x to the 4th over 4. And that is what our fourth degree polynomial is equal to. Okay, so p4 of x, that's a fourth degree polynomial that we have used to approximate the ln of x plus 1 or 1 plus x. Okay, that's our fourth degree polynomial. And that's it. So, gosh, two videos and I've covered one page. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit for you guys, but hopefully it's uh, sinking in a little bit. Hopefully it's making sense.